Hey guys, I'm Ozia, and welcome to another episode. Last episode, we looked at the centrifuge, and some good friends of mine uh, mentioned that you can put wheat in here to extract out to four seeds. You can put pumpkin and melon, melon seeds in here to get more seeds out as well. Um, also, like uh, magma creams can separate the ingredients of magma cream as well. Um, so, apart from uh, chucking the uh, Neverack dust in, they get glowstone and uh, what's it called? I'm um, the uh, stupid gunpowder. Yes. Um, anyway, but let's go on. So beforehand, we were pairing this with a, uh, a ethanol engine, and we were using the 16 times speed gearbox to get it to uh, I think uh, 8,000, um, 8,192 radians a second. Um, I thought this would be an excellent opportunity to. Uh, go on to steam engines, um, so we can essentially get uh, almost free power. Um, so let's get on to that. First of all, we're going to go build the steam engine, and it's pretty simple. Uh, Condense, you have to look at the recipe for that. But it's just um, liquid pipes and steel ingots, not much. Um, here, you can actually use a gold ingot if you feel like it, or if you've got more copper. You know, whichever one you've got more of, I guess. Uh, so we'll just grab the steam engine. Now, the steam engine produces uh, 32 new means of torque at 512 rads. Now, the uh, centrifuge over there only requires... Oh, I'm doing maths. It's like 4,000... Uh, what? 8192... Four, four, uh, someone put the maths down in the comments. Oh, my, my brain's gone. Anyway, it needs roughly 4,000, and this one here is a 16-speed gearbox. We only really needed a 4, I mean a, an 8 times speed gearbox. Um, but, you know, if you've got it, use it, I guess. So I'm just going to chuck it there. Uh, now, these things are essentially um, powered by a heat source below them. So we're going to get a heat source going, but before that, we're going to um, supply this uh, steam engine with a water support. Uh, water supply because um, if you don't supply with water one there's no steam two if they run out of water they can explode from overheating and they tend to um, explode at about 150 degrees celsius so try to make sure they don't get to that temperature okay one more and bam now it's also a good idea to um, be careful about the water supply that you're using. If you use a water supply that potentially uh, gets used by something that needs a lot of water, um, you know, you might run into a chance of this being drained and hence exploding, but it seems to be filling up quite fast, so we wouldn't, shouldn't have any problems. Now, on to the heating of this. Now, you can use um, different kinds of heating sources. Um, so you could use lava, but lava might uh, overheat beyond one. 50 and you might need to use cooling fins which I'll do at a later point but ideally what you want to do is you essentially want to heat it with fire so if you've got a piece of Neverack uh, should do and of course be careful with Neverack uh, and fires fires are bad uh, it says that forest bear or something okay so I'm going to be careful that um, I don't burn through a piece of wood and uh, fall to my death which I have done on many of the green skies worlds in the same manner. So if we look at the um, whaler, we're getting 43, 44 degrees, so it's going to take a little bit of time just to get to 100 degrees, which is required for it to actually start producing power, and we'll get there pretty soon. I don't think we're going to be... Uh, I'm going to just cut this area off a bit. Press F7, check if there's anything. we got a spawn right here. Check the tops of pipes too, because sometimes they can spawn on top of them. And that's my dog out the back, uh, barking at someone, ruining my recording. Okay, what's that temperature at? 81, 82, and while that's almost getting up to 100, I'm going to step up for a second and slide this window across. If you can still hear me. That's it sliding and closing. Okay, hopefully there'll be less dog noises. After all, this is a Minecraft channel, not a dog channel. 
Okay, there we go. We got to a hundred. Uh, we're getting centrifuges at full speed, and so we essentially got. Essentially, we have free power. Um, now the the pump supply over here is essentially free power because it's DC engine. Um, the engine itself is creating essentially free power, but the uh, uh, ethanol run. I mean the uh, lubricant to run the gearbox. Of course, that takes. Um, yeah, some power as well, so, but, yeah. That's essentially how you get a uh, steam engine running. And we can see it's going at 100 and... Oh, it's at 122 degrees Celsius. And it's... Is it almost daytime? It's almost daytime. Yeah. And remember that uh, the time of day is affected by... I mean, the temperature is affected by time of day, not temperature affected by time of day. Um... Make sure uh, you take this into account because if you've got a steam engine that uh, gets close to 150 degrees Celsius, uh, it might explode. So 134. All right, I'm just going to assume it's not going to get to 150. I'm pretty sure it's going to make maybe max 140 degrees. But of course, I'm in a desert, so this engine's going to run a little bit hotter than normal. <coughs> okay, so. That's it for today. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, let me know. Um, chuck them down in the comments. Got any hints? Um, like those awesome guys. Uh, uh, you know what? I will post your names on the top here. One is Industrial Bike, which helps me out all the time. And I'll chuck you out the other person's name. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, they also help. So if you've got hints, tips, or anything like that, let me know. And uh, I'll try and use them. <laughs> so until then, next time, guys. Yeah. Ready, aim, fire.